Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today, in part 9 of the Mastering Multithreading series, we have an exciting topic to delve into. Thread synchronization in C. Thread synchronization is a technique that plays a crucial role ensuring the smooth and safe execution of multithreaded application. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way, you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Efficient thread synchronization techniques in C. Whenever two or more threads tend to reach out a shared resource at a time, the system needs a synchronization mechanism to ensure that only one thread has exclusive access to. Synchronizing access to data is a safe way to prevent race condition from happening along with the system. So we can say that thread synchronization in C# is a technique that ensures multiple threads work together effectively and safely by coordinating their access to a shared resources or critical sections of the code. So thread synchronization can be categorized into four main categories. Let's explore each of them. Our first category is basic blocking techniques. These methods temporarily pause or block a thread ensuring that it waits before proceeding. Some examples include sleep, join and task.wait. Moving on to our second category, locking mechanism. Locks are essential for ensuring exclusive access to the resource. There are two types of locking mechanisms. Exclusive locking, non-exclusive locking. Exclusive locking is used to ensure that at any given point of time, one and only one thread can enter a critical section. We may use one of the exclusive locks such as lock, mutex and a spin lock. Implement exclusive lock in our application. What is lock? Lock this is nothing but a syntactic shortcut for the static method of the monitor class and is used to acquire an exclusive lock on a shared resource. What is mutex? Mutex is similar to the lock keyword except that it can work across multiple processes. Coming to the spin lock, what is a spin lock? It is used to acquire an exclusive lock on a shared resource by avoiding the thread context switch over. Coming to the non-exclusive locking, we can use it to limit concurrency. To implement non-exclusive locks, you can use one of non-exclusive options such as semaphore, semaphore slim and reader writer lock slim. What is semaphore? Semaphore is used to limit the number of threads that can have access to a shared resource concurrently. We can say that it is used to limit the number of consumers for a particular shared resource concurrently. Semaphore slim, it is a fast lightweight alternative to the semaphore class to implement non-exclusive lock. Reader writer lock slim. It is the class that was introduced in .NET Framework 3.5 as a replacement of the reader writer lock class. Category 3 is thread interaction or signaling. This category focuses on communication between threads. We have various options of including event weight handles like auto reset event, manual reset event, manual reset event, slim classes which is introduced in .NET 4.0. In addition, we have methods like monitors weight pulse method, countdown event. Barrier classes. These two are available in .NET 4.0 and above. Finally, our fourth category synchronization methods without block. These methods ensure synchronization without blocking threads entirely. Some of the tools in this category include thread.memory barrier, thread.volatile read, thread.volatile write, the volatile keyword, and the interlocked class. So these are nothing but the synchronization techniques we have in C sharp multi threading. I am planning to cover one by one these synchronization techniques in our upcoming videos. For now, we can see two examples. How to avoid race condition and deadlock that we experience in part 8 of the mastering multi-threading series. Okay, so let's switch to the Visual Studio and see the demo. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of how to handle race condition. For that, we can see the examples of race condition where we experience unpredictable and undesirable outcomes. This is the example that we have already discussed in part 8 of the mastering multi-threading series. But here I am just giving you a little bit idea of what this program does. In this example, we have a counter variable in data type that is shared between two threads, thread 1 and thread. And each thread incremented 1000 times. So ideally total counter value should be 2000. However, there is no proper synchronization which can lead to unexpected and undesirable results. Okay, so if you see this example in detail, we have one counter variable of end data type that I have marked with a static keyword. I have an slice with the zero variable. Right? Then there is a main method which is the entry point of this application. Here what I am doing, I am creating two threads. Thread 1 and thread 2. And this thread 1 and thread 2 is going to get executed increment counter. 
what is the increment counter function this is the increment has one for loop that is going to get exit 1000 times here what i am doing i am just incrementing the counter without proper synchronization so this thread 1 and thread 2 basically pointing to increment counter then i am starting the thread and i am joining the thread so that the main thread can wait for both thread to fit i have written thread 1 and thread 2 dot join and here i am just displaying the final value of the count but i have written console dot right line final counter value let me execute this program and show this output to okay if you see this output got appeared into this console this if you see this final counter value we got 1909 okay let me close this and rerun this program again in second run i got 1920 which is different from the previous run right so now you are seeing that value is not expected one it is unexpected and undesirable one ideally the value should come as a 2000 as a final value because the thread 1 is going to get executed 1000 times and thread 2 is also going to get 1000 times so ideally the value should be 2000 but we are getting 1909 here in this run we got 1920 value are not consistent that is happening due to race condition okay let me show you how to resolve this issue close this okay so now what i need to do order to resolve this issue we need, we need to create an instance and an object let me put it over here a static object let me give the name as a lock object local to new object i have created one object over here. then what i am trying to do where the counter value is getting incremented so that portion i need to put it in lock over here. lock and let me put lock object this one lock so now this is the way how we are going to do here instead of without proper just put it with proper synchronization let me execute this this program and see this output okay now if you see output got appear into this console window we got the value counter value is 2000 as the expected one desirable one right so here what i have done i have implemented locking mechanism specifically i have used lock option exclusive locking mechanism that's what we are able to synchronize this counter variable properly now let's see the examples of deadlock and how to avoid deadlock issue as we know that deadlock occurs when two or more threads are waiting for each other to release resources, resulting in a stand still where none can proceed okay so let's see these examples where we have two threads thread one and thread two both trying to acquire locks on resource one and resource two. do work one method locks resource one first and then attempts to lock resource while do work two does the opposite this can lead to a situation where both threads are waiting for the resource that the other holds that causing a deadlock situation see this do work too here i have changed the order of this locking of particular here i am locking resource two first and then resource work one i am placing a resource one first and then resource two. that's what it causing a deadlock situation okay let's run this examples and see the output Okay, so output got appear into this console. Red one holding lock on resource one. Red two holding lock on resource two. Red one waiting for lock on resource two. Red two waiting for lock on resource two. Resource two is captured by thread two and thread one is waiting. Similarly, resource one is captured by thread one and thread two is waiting. Right? So that causing a deadlock situation. That's why we are not able to get this statement print because both threads are in deadlock situation so program got stuck over it. that's what this program completed did not get printed in this output window okay let me close this now i want to avoid the deadlock situation in this program we can go ahead with that we can ensure both thread acquire locks and resource in the same order so deadlock occurs when thread acquire locks in a different order end up waiting for each other so here if you see do work one method is applying a lock on resource one and resource two but do work two method is applying lock on resource two first and then let me change this order let me change the order resource one here let me put now do work two also placing a lock on resource one first and then resource similar to do work one so that's way we can resolve this deadlock situation for this particular let me execute this and show this output okay if you see 
दिस प्रोग्राम कंप्लीटेड गॉट प्रिंटेड तो प्रोग्राम गॉट कंप्लीटेड प्रिंटेड इट मीन्स डू वर्क वन मेथड कंप्लीटेड देयर वर्क वर्क टू ऑल्सो कंप्लीटेड देयर वर्क एंड दैट्स वॉट दिस कंट्रोल रीच आउट ओवर दियर बिकॉज वी हैव प्लेस द थ्रेड वन डॉट डी टू डॉट जो वन मेन थ्रेड विल वेट अंटिल दिस थ्रेड वन एंड थ्रेड टू गेट्स कंप्लीट नाउ थ्रेड वन एंड थ्रेड टू गॉट कंप्लीटेड एंड दैट्स वॉट दिस स्टेटमेंट गॉट प्रिंटेड सो नाउ डेडलॉक सिचुएशन डिड नॉट अकर नाउ यू हैव सीन हाउ वी कैन अवॉइड द डेडलॉक सिचुएशन Okay, now that brings me to end up my session. To sum up, in this video, we explored the concept of thread synchronization and discussed various thread synchronization available in C sharp multi thread. Right, and we have also seen how to avoid deadlock and how to avoid race condition in C sharp program. So stay tuned for our upcoming videos where we will dive deeper into each of these synchronization techniques one by one. That's all for this video, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.